Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Bradley. This is my channel, Port Gentlemen. It's great to have you. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my very first brew on the beer maker. Full disclosure, I was sent this beer maker for review by the company themselves. They didn't ask or specify I say or do anything. They just kind of let me have my way with it and that could be dangerous. Today I'm brewing what they call the Future IPA All Grain Brewing Kit. If you'd like to learn even more about brewing and brewing equipment, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and brew along with me. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. Here's a look at you get with your beer maker, a beer tap, a measuring cup, a bunch of valves you're gonna need, a beer kit, as well as the machine itself. When you open it up, this is what greets you inside, kind of the basic components. There's a lid, the brew, tub, the squeeze bar. The squeeze bar is integral to the brewing process. It's pretty simple. Uh, the sticker faces you. You insert it with the two tabs on either side. The lid comes off pretty easily. And then you're just left with the brew tub to pull out. Here's a look at the heating slash cooling elements, the vibration motor, and that bottom warming plate. Here's the brew basket. It's dishwasher safe, stainless steel mesh with plastic. It's actually really robust and it's very fine. Uh, it's pretty easy to clean as well. Here I am installing this first gray valve onto the brew tub. I use some silicone. Some users have had issues with uh, this being installed too tight or leaking. I got mine pretty tight, but I could have got it tighter. And this is what connects the brew bag, which you'll see in a minute, to the brew tub. Definitely lubing it up helps. I can't recommend lube. Lube, 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 everything you do. Just lube it. When you insert the brew tub, hook it in the back first, and then just drop it down forward. This is the maker kit. It comes in a paper bag. Mine did rupture a little bit, but everything inside it was fine. And it has everything you need all in this one uh, small package. It's got brew bags, hops, yeast, sanitizers, grain, CO2 cartridges, and in this kit's instant, it also has dry hops. This is optional. This is a tray I got on Amazon to contain any dripping, link below, as well as a little makeshift pallet that I made to raise it up off the tray in case I should make a mess. Although, to date, I haven't made a mess, so it may be fully optional. Next up, we're going to install the brew bag. It just hangs off of these tabs. Next up, we'll install the brew tub, and that just rocks in the same way I explained earlier. I had some trouble connecting this valve. It could have been because I was working here on cameras, and I'm large, but it wasn't that hard once I got the hang of it. There's the squeeze bar. You just slip that in and kind of work it into place. Once again, I'm working around camera equipment. It's the first time I've done it, so it gave me a little bit of trouble, but you should be able to figure it out pretty quickly on your own. Just take your time, make sure everything's in its place. The app really does instruct you how to do this quite well. Each recipe kit comes with paper instructions as well as the app also knows how much water you need. It came with this awesome container to measure in. The measurements are accurate and just dump in how much water is required per the recipe's instructions. Make a little bit of a mess, but you can see it all fills up the entire brew bag and the waste bag. Definitely now is going to be a good time to check for leaks. Make sure at this point you don't have any drips. Now it's time to pour in your grains. This kit had a decent amount of grains, but it's still minimal compared to what I'm used to. Just pour them in, nothing special here. Just make sure they're padded level at the top. This was not in the instructions. I actually made a water profile and built my water up from reverse osmosis water. This is really the best way to get the best quality beer in my opinion but not necessary. Use whatever water you have access to. Just make sure it doesn't have chlorine. Here I'm just mixing it in and then just topping it up to the indicated amount within the recipe, which I found to be dead on accurate. Now just dump the water on top of the grains. Take your time. Do it nice and easy. You don't want to make a big mess here and just make sure all the grains are saturated. I didn't have to do any sort of stirring or agitation. Definitely want to make sure you get every last drop of water. One last look before you close the lid. This system actually mashes for about 24 hours, more or less, and it heats it to about 165 degrees. So in a few seconds here, we'll snap the lid on and lock it into place. The seals are actually 
Really good, just make sure they're all in the proper grooves and lock the latches one at a time and it ensures a nice tight seal. Firmly press down as you're locking the latches, everything seals up. Put the lid back on. And then basically close the lid. In about 24 hours or so, the app will prompt you to start the next steps. Quick look here at the system to this point. Just close the door and push the button. When it stops flashing, you know you're good to go. It'll let you know when it's ready for you. The app just notified me that it's time to do another step. This step, we're going to remove the squeeze bar and remove the mass basket. If you've never brewed beer before, this is really a treat. It smells amazing. Uh, it smells just like brewing beer. There's nothing better in my opinion. So pulling out the squeeze bar, again, I'm working here on cameras, but I just popped out one side as best I could. It was in there pretty good, and the other side came right out. And then you can see at this point all of that wort making its down into that brew bag. There has been a vacuum created, so you'll need to pop the lid a little bit to let some air in to equalize the chamber. Uh, you have to pull on it pretty good. Don't be afraid. You're not going to break it, but it is, like I said, a very tight seal. Just give it a good tug and you got it. Make sure your hands are thoroughly washed for this step as well. Here we are filling up that brew bag, sped up just a little tiny bit here in a second. I probably let this go in reality for 10 or 15 minutes. This is sped up like 600%, much, much faster than in real life. It's time to pull out the spent grains. Just grab the handles. Give the basket a little tug, it comes right out. I actually held a half sheet pan in front of my unit and put the basket in that because there will be some residual wart inside of the basket that will drip all over. No one likes stickiness or ants. It does have a vibration motor. The first time my wife heard this, she got very, very excited. You can program it within the app so it's quiet during certain hours. Like I said, the sound of this just, it gets my wife going. She gets really excited. So definitely, if it's in your kitchen or close to your bedroom, set it to a time when you're not sleeping. Per the app's instructions, it's time to pitch the yeast, which I sanitized with alcohol wipes included in the kit itself. Next, it's time to add your hops. The hops are going to vary on the style of the kit you're making or the recipe you're making. This one's a kind of a hazy IPA, so it's got a good amount of hops. That's for sure. Just sprinkle them all in there. Me scraping this one down is actually not necessary. At high Kreuz and it's going to fill up that entire space with liquid and yeast and whatnot. Definitely make sure you're as sanitary as possible. And just close the lid, much the same as before. Snap all the snaps. Replace the lid, hooking the back hooks first and then just gently lowering it down on top of the unit. Close the main door and press the button, let it know you're good to go. Here's a quick look at the fermentation. It's been so long since I've been able to see fermentation going on. It still is just as cool as the first time I ever brewed beer. It's awesome to watch the yeast do its thing and all the CO2 and all the various processes and stages of fermentation. Like I mentioned before, as long as you have liquid up to that certain point indicated within the app, you're just fine. Don't even worry about it. It'll get its way up there. Dry hopping, this is super easy, much the same as all the other processes. Just open the lid and sanitize it. I use Star Sand. I can't help myself. I'm a home brewer. Honestly, I spray everything with Star Sand around the house. It drives the wife insane. You can see here's some CO2 escaping. It's time to start dumping in the dry hops. This recipe has a good amount of these dry hops or their steam dry hops. Just get them all in there as quickly as you can. This is when your brew is its most vulnerable. You have the top of this fermenter open. You definitely don't want things getting in there, flies especially, and pieces of hair, none of that. Really try and be as sanitary as possible. Definitely lots of opening and closing a little in the process, but it's more than robust enough to take it. I didn't film it, but I actually reinstalled the squeeze bar. Primary fermentation is now complete. It's time to re remove the squeeze bar that I didn't show being installed in the first place. You can see things have really kind of stopped 
All the activity stopped. Everything's kind of settling out. It's time to pull that squeeze bar and let it drain from the brew tub into the brew bag. The squeeze bar definitely fits in there tightly. Really just pop it right out. It'll come out. I bumped it. It didn't hurt anything. It may have actually helped the process moving stuff around. Who's to say? Now you just let the chamber equalize. You don't open the brew bucket again. Put the lid on it. Close the door. Push the button. Once it stops blinking and goes solid, you know that you are good to go. And the app will alert you of the next step. Before we move to the next step, we are going to go over the beer tap and talk about that for a second. The beer tap is a serving device that supports that pouch. You do not want to open this when it's under pressure because I'm thinking the bag will explode. The tap actually constricts it. It's a clamshell design. These are the valves that go to the tap. They have a red gasket. The gasket, you really need to be careful with that gasket. It's much softer than the other gaskets, so it can pinch. Just be mindful of that and you shouldn't have any issues. You'll first need to clean all this stuff up before you can assemble it. Quick look at the other side. This is what actually latches it onto the bag itself, is that little mechanism. The next step is to disconnect the brew bag from the brew tub and the waste bag. It's super straightforward. You literally just grab the valve on the bottom, press it with your finger, and the two will come apart with minimal wess. You see, I had a tiny little bit of a drip. I was able to wipe that up with a piece of microfiber cloth, no problem. The top, same thing. Just push the valve, it came right off. At this point, you'll probably want to get the whole brew tub out of the way. I just lifted it up slightly because of my own space constraints. I grabbed the brew bag and took it out of the machine. Next, I'm cleaning the valves per the app's instructions with the included alcohol wipes. Sanitation is key. I'm not sure if I could use star sand on these components. I bet I could. In the future, I'll probably switch to just using star sand because it's easier for me. Not to say the alcohol wipes don't do the job. This is the gas side. And then I'm just hooking the gas valve to the gas connector. Again, be mindful of these threads. You kind of want to spin it... Um, counterclockwise at first to see once you can get it started and get it set. And there I have it went together perfectly the first try with minimal fuss, just making sure it's tight, but not too tight. I can't stress that enough. Next, we're going to connect the gas line to the bag itself, push the black button in and pop it on the valve. It's actually super easy to connect these. This is the beverage out valve. Same process as the other one. Just push it and click it on. At this point, you're going to want to check for leaks. Before you pressurize it, make sure you have a good connection. Everything is tight. Now it's time to feed this guy into the beer tap. This is kind of tricky, and I was a little more nervous than I should have been, honestly. You can be pretty rough with this bag, I think. You just want to make sure that that white flange on the bag itself is in front of the gray plastic. That's so you know you have the right location, and fold the handle back. And then, of course, you're going to want to make sure that you have the gas lines routed in such a way that they're not going to bind up. As long as you take your time and make sure you have adjusted everything properly so nothing's going to bind or pinch. I don't see you having any trouble. Don't be afraid. Just, like I said, you can muscle it. Now we're just going to uh, close the top of the clamshell. Make sure that you kind of go slow and watch and make sure you don't pinch anything. And work everything in there and just lock the latch. Next up, per the app's instructions, I made sure that I got a little bit of liquid coming out. Uh, unfortunately, that happened just off camera. Now it's time to pressurize. It came with this little sleeve to help grip the CO2 cartridge. You want to screw this cartridge in. You'll start hearing it fill up. It's going to sound kind of crazy, but don't be scared. Everything's just fine. Keep turning it until it gets honestly really hand tight. You're good to go at this point. It's just a matter of time. The beer should be fully carbonated in about 24 hours. My beer went into the fridge for 24 hours, which went by all too slowly. Before you know it, it was time to pour. There's a little bit of sediment in there because this is literally the first pour I pulled off of it. And I had to walk about 30 feet to get it to the brewery so I could film this. But the sediment's not a big deal. It's, it's really amazing uh, how good this beer tastes. Fresh out of the beer tap. Let's 
give it a smell, guys. I'm by no means a qualified beer judge. I don't drink enough uh, hazies or IPAs to even begin to, to tell you what's in here. I can tell you it smells really good. It, it looks the part. Hopefully that's showing up here. I'm really impressed by the head. That's good. Uh, I had a little sip last night and it seemed a little bit bitter to me, overly hoppy, but it's, I don't detect that now. I just had an IPA about 20 minutes ago. So my, my palate's kind of, you know, not shocked by it, but yeah, um, I'm impressed. This, this made awesome beer step by step, told me how to do it, held my hand basically. And I was able to do it the first time and it's good. It, it's really good. So, all right. So we just drank the beer and the beer is good. I mean, it's quite honestly, extremely good. I'm very impressed with how well it came out. The beer maker team is actually working on a ton of stuff right now. Their manual control mode for the beer maker is just about to be released. I think this week it may be even be out as of, uh, as you're watching it right now, to be honest. I've spoken with the team at beer maker and they're super willing to bring stuff like brew father integration out and other integration to make the system more, uh, usable for more advanced users, just like myself. One of the things I'm looking most forward to is being able to use this as a pilot system for my home brewery. At least I can try out different grain combinations. All in all, my first experience was really positive. Anyone can make beer in the system. I'm convinced of it. The company's instructions are beautiful. No one has instructions like they do. Believe me. Moving forward, guys, there will be a full review video, but that won't be for at least a month or two until I've had a chance to really make some beers and try to do my own DIY recipes and see how it all works out. I'm eager to use this as kind of a pilot system to do experimentation, even radical experimentation. I wouldn't want to do in a 10 gallon batch or five or 15 gallon batch, stuff that's way outside the box. Hopefully I can use a um, uh, Vost or some sort of yeast strain to really uh, make that rapid kind of beer happen quickly. Get an idea of what I can expect in a full batch on my B80 Pro. So the possibilities are there for a lot. With the sensor inside the top of this guy, it's basically able to monitor the fermentation's progress via off-gassing. So it's gonna know how much CO2 is coming out of the wort as it's turning into beer, basically. They don't have the data yet to roll this feature out, but it is on the horizon. It's really crazy cool feature. I don't know anyone else that's messing with that. I'm excited to see what that does. I myself, I'm working on a Brewfather profile, which I hope to make available very soon. Obviously I'm having some difficulty counting IBU. That's gonna be tricky. Hopefully the beer maker team is willing to, to jump in and do that for the community. It'll make this even better. All in all initially, I think this will actually bring brewing to more people guys. And that's what I really care about. It's not just all about my B80 pros or other expensive equipment. This is not cheap, but it will bring home brewing to people that don't have the space for a full setup or that don't simply want it yet. They don't know that they need it. This is definitely going to help a lot of people get into the hobby and I'm all for that. The system is heavily reliant on the app. The app props you for everything. When it's time to do all the steps, it's right there with instructions teaching you how to do it. The first time was super simple and I've never brewed on anything like this. I promise. Having said that the app helped me through it. Every step of the way it was there with instructions and promptings and told me exactly what to do. And I'm a, a rather advanced home brewer. So this was awesome. I really think anyone that gets this can definitely brew on it, but let's hold off for my full complete review in a couple months time. Once again, this has been Bradley. Remember home brewing is good and I'll see you real, real soon.